Welcome everyone to the Co-Creators Convergence Third Thursday Conversation. My name is Noelle Marshall and I'm here with my beloved. Hi everyone, Bob Warner. Great to have you with us this evening. Uh, together we call ourselves Light Partners and we also serve as the stewards of the Co-Creators Convergence. And we're here every Thursday night with wonderful co-creators bringing their gifts to the shift in humanity. So right now I'm going to ask uh, everyone to go ahead and turn off your video and mute yourself. And we're going to do a wonderful presentation tonight. There's a lot of audio and video. So let's uh, put that there. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the co-creators convergence. is a little bit about us. And uh, tonight what I'd like to do is to uh, turn this over to my dear friend and co-creator Tex Albert from Montreal. And Tex, you have brought us a wonderful guest tonight and I am at your service. So I know you have a lot of audio visuals. It's gonna be in two parts. And so after you do a short centering for us text, would you please introduce our wonderful guest, Imogene Drummond. Thank you, Tex. Thank you, Noel. Uh, thank you, Bob. Uh, we definitely grateful and uh, happy to be collaborating uh, with you at the Co-Creators Convergence. And, uh, this evening, as you say, we have uh, as a guest, uh, I'm honored to introduce uh, Imogen Drummond, uh, who has a, a master's in uh, fine arts, master's in uh, social work. And um, Imogen will be uh, uh, presenting to us uh works or works or arts that connects the creativity and transformation in the cosmos with our own potential for creativity and transformation so at this point i call on us to uh breathe to be aware that we are breathing and because we are breathing we are alive so we know we are alive and uh and breathing on this uh, planet one planet earth and uh to that extent, we are in oneness with all of humankind. So uh, to me, that's the most important centering we can do is to re re realize our, our oneness with all of humankind on this uh, speck in the cosmos that is planet Earth. Now, Imogen's discussion will uh, center around her seminal short film, uh, Divine Sparks, uh, educational creativity program, uh, Art Sparks, and an article on cultural transformation, which she calls uh, uh, Metamorphosis uh, uh, for Cultural Transformation. Um, she will also introduce us to the uh, 
uh, a toolkit that she has uh, developed to enable uh, effective uh, participation online. So at this point, I will ask uh, uh, Noel to play the film trailer for Divine Sparks. I had a friend. Once upon a time, in and out of this great void, glimmered invisible sparks, twinkled invisible sparks, glittered invisible sparks like twinkling, glittering stars or fireflies. Being divine, they were the sparks of greatest possibilities. As you see, this is a very short uh, uh, look into Imogen's uh, film, uh, Divine Sparks. Now, each of Imogen's project has evolved out of her desire to help us, to help uh, uh, people experience our connectedness with each other and the universe more deeply and uh, foster thrivability on the planet. So Imogen, uh, if I may ask you, how did you get to become uh, uh, such an, uh, an artist, an accomplished artist? How, how did you find your way to becoming an artist and, uh, and where did the inspiration for, for your film come from? Well, that's a great question. Thank you, Chex. Um, for the question and for inviting me here. And thank you, Noel and Bob, for hosting this wonderful conversation and evening tonight. I appreciate it. Um, sure. Oh. Is this going to cl cl click? There we go. So after making the film, I adapted it into a educational creativity program because I wanted the film to to do more than just make people feel good. Um, so the program, I designed the program to facilitate individual creativity. 
uh, promote self-esteem, and connect students to the cosmos. As the film is dedicated to my late father, the two human characters in it are my father at different life stages. So I like the way this image conveys the idea of growth and on the film and creativity book covers that show him as a boy and man. Prior to the pandemic, I taught this program for, uh, to fifth graders at San Miguel Academy of Newburgh, New York a visionary middle school for low opportunity boys. When these children arrive at San Miguel, they have had very little, if, it, if any, art. My goal is not to teach them art, but to help them express themselves visually. In my introduction, I tell students that as art is an expression, there are no wrong answers. And I want them to, so they can't make a mistake or do something wrong. Plus, I tell them I want them to have fun. They are invariably surprised to hear this. By combining creativity, self-worth, and the cosmos, Art Sparks facilitates making empowering art contextualized in a deep time perspective. Each session connects a phase of emergence in the cosmos represented by a color and life-affirming idea with activities that help students develop their creativity. The starred activities are the ones that I use in my 12-week course at San Miguel. So that you can better understand the program, I'll share a brief overview, followed by an example of one student's growth. Unlike traditional, art classes. Art Sparks blends teaching, therapeutic, and mindfulness techniques with technology. This student-centered play-based methodology encourages, engages students' participation in multiple ways. The first session um, sets the tone for children expressing themselves personally. They visually express what work they want to be doing in 10 years when they are 20 years old, how they will get there and what equipment and people will help them on their journey. Jason wants to become a doctor helping poor people in the Caribbean. He envisions that his parents and teacher will help him on his path. The blue session connects the metaphorical great blue void from which everything emerged with the idea of possibility. As this activity was to create an image about what blue means to me, one of the students, Nasai, asked if he could make a sad painting. When I said yes, he asked if he could paint a river of tears. I again said yes. He courageously painted this poignant piece. This kind of work is important because when children express their feelings constructively in art, they are less likely to act them out destructively. The next session, Black and White, about the emergence of night and day symbolizes interconnectedness. It explores ideas that every piece of art is a work of creation and transformation. Students start with a blank paper and create something that didn't exist before. In doing so, they transform art materials into artwork. Literally experiencing creation and transformation Students realize that they have, to varying degrees, the potential to create and transform their own situations. The red session connects the emergence of water and sky with the idea of transformation. Students learn that each person can be a hero and that transformation is doable. 
We discuss what transformation means and how youngsters can be heroes in their own lives. Students create a piece of artwork of a difficult situation and then put themselves in the art to make the situation better. The Green Session on the Emergence of Plants and Trees explores the idea of growth, personal as well as botanical. Naturally, this session involves a movement activity. Children select a dance card about growth. For example, from seed to flower, egg to fish, and tadpole to frog. They then create an improv dance where they express the subject of their card growing from newborn to maturity. As the students slowly begin to slay, sway, hop, and gyrate, they experience their own personal and physical growth in an embodied way as connected with the cosmos. They then paint about their experience or the idea of growth. The yellow session links the emergence of the sun, moon, and stars with love. Carl Sagan's idea that we are physically connected to the stars and are all star stuff is mind expanding. One boy said that idea was off the chain. Mm -hmm. Students make an image about what they love or what makes them happy. The purple class connects the emergence of animals with the idea of journey. Discussions center around the benefits of going on a journey. I like how Amani used natural materials in this piece, as did Chris. The orange session connects the emergence of humans with the idea of consciousness. My dream of the future activity builds on the earlier session by helping young people envision one, where they want to be in 20 years instead of 10. It's important to ask not just what work you want to be doing, but also where you want to be living and what solutions you want to be working on. John wants to work on airplanes when he grows up. This is Jason who wants to be a medical doctor. I like how he progressed from making a symbolic image of how he will become a doctor to creating a portrait of himself as a doctor. He's now a straight A student at Fordham Prep. The program develops toward increasing complexity as it explores creating more harmonious relationships by shifting from me to we through collaborative art making. After 10 sessions focused on developing one's artistic self-expression, the collaborative activity is often initially difficult. However, it becomes one of the students' favorites when they experience how much fun it is to collaborate. Here the boys surround their joint effort. As this artwork is the result of each of them working on all the pieces, they realize that not one single person could have made it. It took all of them. The course culminates with a review where each student is surprised to see that he has developed his own artistic voice. And John just used three-dimensional pieces in these without anyone encouraging him to do that. The same for all of them. Look at this strong visual language here. So that you better understand the process, I want to share one student's experience. Aldair transformed from a shy, awkward loner to a relaxed, warm student whose social skills and learning improved significantly. 
In the first class, he was so anxious that he cried until told that there is no right or wrong answer in art. During the early sessions, Aldair frequently looked so distant and unengaged, it was as if he had an individual, invisible fence around him with a do not disturb sign on it. When he put his hand up to participate and I called on him, he would pause and then shake his head no and put his hand down. This is a photo of him at the beginning of the course. During the improv dance, as the other boys gyrated, jumped, hopped, and swayed all around him, he stood stock still with his hands in his pockets. This lively activity about physically expressing growth is important, especially as we often learn through embodied experiences. I was initially deeply concerned at Aldair's lack of engagement. However, he slowly and dramatically changed. This is his pivotal piece where he created a painting about his dream for his future as a firefighter. What a powerful symbol. By engaging in his own creative process from being scared to envisioning himself as a heroic firefighter, Aldair changed his identity from feeling helpless to being a proactive and empowered participant in his own life. As he transformed from being distant to being engaged, he widened his previous tiny circle of friends and improved academically. After the course ended, Aldair spoke to me numerous times and carried on appropriate adult-like conversations with warmth and interest. This is Aldair a year later. This photo was taken a year after Aldair graduated from San Miguel Academy when he was a freshman in high school. When I told him that he'd done the best in art sparks, he smiled and replied, that's what everyone said. In their evaluation of the course, students sum up what they learn. The following comments demonstrate that they understand what Art Sparks is about. We are all special, so we should feel good about ourselves. I learned that I can express my feelings in art. We live in space. I love that one. I learned that I am part of something bigger. Wonderful. Wonderful, Imogen. Thank we, you. Yeah, we <laughs> see how uh, your, uh, you know, academic qualifications, you know, uh, master's in fine arts, my master's in social work, and uh, your current uh, membership uh, in the Association of Clinical Social Work, all this sort of melds into your work uh because from what i sense uh divine spark it's uh the divine spark in each of us and art sparks like essentially sparks the divine or the best in uh these uh you know uh, youngsters in a way so art ignites their creativity ignites uh, them to manifest themselves now, yes. if, if I may ask you, having worked like with uh, this, uh, uh, with the youth, the eight to 12 a lot, and then having done the, the film, I mean, uh, I know you've done some reflection uh, in terms of uh, humankind uh, overall. And I know you, you've uh, written a paper that's been published, a 20 page paper. Uh, where you posit that uh, humankind has the power to transform culture and that if we can consciously envision, envision a transformed civilization for future millennia, then we can build it. It makes me think of uh, Buckminster Fuller, who said hmm. something to the effect of uh, we, we should use our resources and meet the needs of everyone 
rather than uh, wasting resources in, in weaponry, we ought to use resources for livingry. Wow. So can you uh, introduce us to your thinking uh, in terms of uh, humankind? Uh, how do you see this uh, cultural metamorphosis of humankind, as you say? Well, great, great question. And, um, you know, I love your comments and what you just said, Tex. Um, you know, it's interesting. Um, I'll share my screen again. So I wrote this article and it was published during the time when I was applying for grants to get so I could fund the film. Um, so I, I was applying for grants for three years. So during that time, I uh, wrote this article. And uh, <clears throat> so the article is named Options for the Future, Transforming Society Through a Process of Cultural Metamorphosis. And it's the closing piece in the thought-provoking anthology the Rule of Mars, published by KIT, K-I-T, in 2006. And it was endorsed by Pulitzer Prize-winning scientist and author Jared Diamond. Um, I was thrilled that Dr. Lee Ray M. Costa, in her review, wrote three concluding essays by Clark, Eisler, and Drummond, chart an exciting path for a world beyond patriarchy based on community solidarity, partnership, and respect for Mother Earth. So basically my article looks at how our global patriarchal culture can change through a process of metamorphic phases. You know, people have, I've heard people say for many years that um, we need a paradigm shift but I had never heard anyone say what that paradigm should look like. So I started thinking about it. And as a visual thinker, um, I looked at it as, a, as, a, as an exploration, a problem uh, to look at visually, to solve visually. So I thought of, um, as a visual thinker, when I thought of how, how to visualize our patriarchal, culture, I thought of a pyr pyramid where the power and control and communication comes from the top down. Um, and obviously that's problematic. So when I asked myself how that structure could be transformed, it seemed logical that it had to be feminized by smoothing out these hard, straight lines of the pyramid. And, and in smoothing out those straight lines, the shape becomes a cone. And interesting, the bottom, instead of being this square, is a circle, you know, back to the cosmic egg. Um, so I think that that's what has been happening today with the Me Too movement. Um, so when the, and as patriarchy is an unhealthy contract, it's, it's, over, it's an unhealthy, overly competitive contract between males. It can never truly be transformed. So another structure is needed. Um, so I envision what Stephen Jay Gould called a cone of diversity, which grows up from the center of the bottom toward it, upward and outward, um, which makes sense. That's how things grow, right? They grow toward the light and they become more diverse. And when that, when I envision those two shapes, then there are these interlocking cones, but really that in itself looks pretty static to me. It doesn't look organic and fluid, which is what we need to be, um, to be healthy. So, um, I imagine that new cone of diversity continuing to move and outward and upward. And interestingly, when it if it turned sideways, it wouldn't be unbalanced. 
it wouldn't be um, problematic because in fact, it has two wings or two sections now that, that provide equilibrium um, that are equitable. So uh, I think it's interesting that, that this image now it becomes a symbol for the ancient archetypal symbol of transformation, which is the butterfly. Um, and when I wrote the article 15 years ago, I didn't know what that new cone or shape would be. But now I think it is a culture that with an integrated deep time perspective. And that's how important a cosmocentric or in integral perspective is. Whether you call it deep time, big history, ecozoic, Teilhard's new sphere, a new story, everybody's story, the emerging mind of the universe or a different word or phrase that conveys the meaning of honoring an integrated cosmic context. And, you know, when we, I, I think this is so important because it shows us how we can promote our own transformation. Yeah, well, yeah. definitely uh, much, uh, much food for thought. And uh, over the last two years, uh, uh, people generally have had to pause because of this little virus. And uh, we've uh, noticed uh, that there's a lot of uh, interactions happening online, uh, even work. I mean, like myself living here in Quebec, uh, I know that uh, much work, uh, is being done uh, virtually still today. Uh, so people are out of offices and working from home. And mm -hmm. uh, there has been a lot of meetings online, online meetings. Uh, right. Now, I, I sense that uh, there is a, an awareness and a conscious effort to try and um, evolve uh, humanity, to evolve in our collaboration that we may collaborate in solidarity for the common good. Everyone is thinking in terms of the common good. So uh, Imogen, from your experience, uh, have you come up with something that can uh, assist us? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, actually I have. Um, and by the way, uh, I just want to say that um, this article goes into a lot more details about ways we can, you know, improve and transform our culture. Um, and someone said recently, um, Bill McKibben is starting a new organization called Third Act to involve people to come together for the earth. And um, someone at the, Benny, Penny Andrews at the Deep Time Network said, he's calling us to murmurate you know, to like birds do when they, they fly in unison. And I think that's what we need to do. Um, and that this, this last stage, it wouldn't be really the last stage of metamorphosis because once we get on that process, it'll continue. But I think that's what we're being called to do is to, to join together, you know, the people with this, um, you know, deep time view, join together and murmurate together <laughs> to move us forward. So. Uh, I just wanted to comment on that. And yeah. yes. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, so yeah, any comment before I talk about a quits? Uh, maybe uh, let's go on to our quits and then we'll open okay. for Q&A. Okay, great. Okay. Um, so yes, I, de I developed a, uh, after attending many Zoom sessions with diverse groups in the past almost two years, I created a quits toolkit to help develop effective communication for groups online. And it could be in person as well, but I think we, we really need help online at the moment. So the acronym refers to the lesser known definition of the word quits, meaning how one conducts oneself, as well as to the first letter of each technique. 
So this resource equips individuals with the skills necessary to conduct themselves productively in meetings, courses, and other gatherings, conversations like we're having today. The goal of EQUITS is to help people engage in mutually beneficial dialogue versus a series of monologues. Techniques are based on public speaking, psychotherapy, and community building. And the EQUITS toolkit leads to optimal communication for all. Naming and agreeing upon the techniques that are listed here Affirm, contribute, question, unite, include, think. Um, make, make them compelling. So learning to express affirmation, ask open-ended questions, bolster inclusivity, share gratitude, and contribute succinctly to the conversation are some of the ways that advance collective dialogue and mutual growth. Excellent. So, uh, excellent, uh, uh, Imogen. We'll, we'll take a little break and uh, uh, have a Q&A now, uh, if Noel right. can put us into gallery view. And uh, everyone, uh, you know, put switch on the, the video and uh, Imogen will, uh, will answer some uh, questions and we'll explore. And then in the second part, the last part, uh, We'll give you an example of where acquits is being applied, uh, you know, in, in a group dynamic. So, any uh, any questions? Uh, feel free to to ask. Uh, lift you can lift your virtual hand in Zoom or or just raise your hand and we can see you. Pamela, you you seem to want to yeah. Unmute. Okay. Yes. Hi. Oh, I love the art and I love the program. And in part because it uh, it's holistic, everything that I do and all my programs are holistic. You have to bring in the body and the mind and the heart and the soul. Exactly. So otherwise, you know, if you just, uh, if it's all intellectual, mm -hmm. it just... Totally goes totally. over but i i put a note in here about how art and poetry and all of those things uh bypass our minds which keep us from uh expanding because we're we have such deep grooves <laughs> in our brains <laughs> so i loved what you what you did the program is beautiful and and uh just fantastic thank you Thank you so much, Pamela. Thank you. Um, did you have a question? I uh, I have a question. Okay. Is the program still ongoing? Is it still available? Is it online? Um, <sighs> do the children go through it? There's 12 different phases. Do you do it like one a week or, you know, it's, it's really marvelous. I, I just want to do it. Thank you, Noel. And really, it's for all ages. It can be adapted for not just um, you know different ages, but also different types of media. Like you could use it for literacy, or you could use it for music. Um, you know, or you could mix it up and have it be very diverse, expressive arts if you had the capability for that. In teaching in a school, I decided to focus on visual arts because that's just more practical. Mm -hmm. um, I've been teaching it uh, at this school for five years, and if I was cloned, I would I would work there full time <laughs> because it's it's a visionary situation. Um, I I haven't done it during the pandemic because I am being very vigilant about um, self quarantining, um, but when I would teach it. Uh, it would. It was once a week for twelve weeks, and I have the. Um, I have the book. I've designed a book for it, and I have a DVD for it. And I, you know, I would love to find a publisher to publish it. And Follette School Solutions was initially. They they were like, yes, yes, we'll sell and we'll sell it as a kit and we'll sell it as a DVD, but they wanted me to do to do it. To be the publisher and I was like I, I can't do that too <laughs> I just 
I can't. Well, we might start have some suggestions for you there. So, great, uh, <laughs> great, wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. That's not a, that's not a problem. Um, oh, great. But you know what I love about it is you're introducing concepts that I'm going to say I never heard till I was in my 50s some of those words and concepts. You know, well, how, how expanding is that? It blows my exactly. mind. Exactly. And I don't talk down to these kids and they're, they're not only only 10 years old, but, you know, some of them English isn't their first language, but it's amazing because this way they learn, they learn what transformation means or what, whatever the word is. But sometimes too, they'll say, oh, we just studied that yesterday or, or last week. And I'm like, whoa, uh, <laughs> or they know what metaphor means. You know, I'm like, oh, this is a metaphor. What, you know, who knows what a metaphor is? And it's like, I'm like, okay. And it's exactly right. So it's wonderful when you um, treat them with that kind of respect that they're, they not only may know it, that they, because I tell them they have, they already know how to make art. You know, they know how to make a, a triangle and a circle and a square and a straight line and a curved line. So they already know how to make art. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to teach them to make art. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh my God. <laughs> but, but, but it just, it, it sets up an affirmation for them that yes, they can do it. And then they go, I put out a bouquet, a bouquet, a banquet of um, art materials. And then they just go find what works for them. And, you know, I had toilet paper rolls and paper towel rolls and they might snicker at it, but they use them. <laughs> okay. So they just, it really it sort of sets up them. It gives them permission to follow their own inclinations. Beautiful, beautiful. Ah. And it's definitely holistic, Pamela, definitely. <laughs> so I'm glad that you saw that. Yeah. Thank you. Viola, did you want to jump in here? Oh, I was just talking to myself and saying, I love that. You know, it's so exciting. Yeah, I, I, I love the idea of just throw because I'm kind of like a, what do you call it? A gatherer of goods. You know, I go to yard sales and I buy all kinds of stuff for my granddaughter. And when I was teaching for, I used to do a lot of workshops, you know, for critical thinking and stuff like that, creative thinking. But anyhow, I can visualize gathering all of these things and just throwing them out there and let them pick what they want and then just putting yeah. it together any way they want. I mean, I the things that people come up with yeah. always used yeah. to amaze me. I have no doubt. This is so wonderful. I wish we, you know. <laughs> you know, I want to tell you this. I took this out because I was trying to make it more succinct. But um, in the first session about, you know, creating an image of where you want to be in 10 years, this one boy created a basketball that was, you know, looked like a mandala. And he had a, an image of himself looked very fierce at the bottom. But in these sections, you know, he had the black line. So it looked like a spider's web. And in each section, he had put a pom-pom because the teacher had gotten fabric and, and, and ribbons. And, we, you know, I mean, we had this diverse selection of materials and he used pom-poms in his, artwork. So here the circles of the pom-poms are reinforce, reinforcing the circle of the, the basketball. But also it was this, this fusion of male and female, uh, you know, associated materials that, you know, here th these boys, he didn't shy away from using pom-poms. <laughs> I was like, excellent. <laughs> so it was very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I saw Jocelyn, uh, if I'm right, Jocelyn, are you calling in from Philippines? Yeah. Hi, no, Joji. Actually, I'm, hi, I'm back in Panama, which is my mission okay. place. So, okay, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. you're in Panama. Did you yes. want to say something uh, or ask? I know you're in the Deep Time uh, Leadership oh, yes. Program, correct? Yeah. Yes, yes. No, I am completely in admiration. Actually, with um, with Imogen's work, and it's uh, for me, especially uh, working with children, is also one of the things that we try to do uh, here in our in our ministry in our place. And it's it's it just like I <laughs> I was telling her even from the beginning of our course last year that it's uh, it's it's just so fascinating how art really can bring out not just the 
the children's talents and the young people, but really helps them to get in touch with, with their relationship and this whole idea that I am part of something bigger than, than myself, than mm -hmm. my family or my community. And, and really helps to bring out their, not just their creativity, but their sense of identity as part of a, a bigger uh, picture of the world and the universe. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah. so, yeah, I was telling Imogen, I wish it could be translated into Spanish so I could <laughs> already mm. work on it with, with some of our people here. So, wow. Oh. Panama. Yeah, wonderful, yes. wonderful. Now, um, if we don't have any other questions at this point, we'll have another Q&A at the end. Uh, I will briefly go uh, and do an overview of a program where the participants are consciously uh, applying uh, acquits to help us uh, develop uh, what we call emergent dialogue. And uh, it's in the deep time network. So I will, uh, if you enable me to screen share. Uh, one, one second. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, just I want to make one comment. Imogene, it'd be wonderful that cultural transformation and how you use the shapes and explained how that, that would be wonderful if you animated that. Oh, and, wow. And that's a great that. idea. Wow. Yeah, because well, that that is so genius. That's a great idea. That's a great I idea. Have a great idea. I, <laughs> I actually want to rewrite the article and update it, and that's going to be a major undertaking for me. Yeah, but I try to. Here. Yeah, you can do it. We we're... <laughs> another mini movie. Yeah. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Talking about. Oh mini my movie. god! I can see me too wrapping around the cone. <laughs> this I'd like to pop in for a minute here? before you jump into yeah. another okay, presentation. Yeah. Um, yeah. First of all, nice to meet you all. And um, just a surprise evening. All of a sudden it was like, I'm gonna get on. And I saw your picture and it was like, okay, let's just go check this out. And this is the first time I've been introduced to your work and um, seeing everyone except for Bob and Noel, who I know very well. But on the thing that really, first of all, I completely loved the whole um, presentation and the um, was incredibly touched by the depth in which you're reaching children in a way that is very rare. You know, I mean, there's lots of different people attempting that, but you've done it in such an incredible way. And mm -hmm. to me, I see it, it, it would be really powerful to have it replicate replicable that other people oh. can really be doing this. And right. the thing right. that touched me the most, because I really do a lot of work with group resonance. And um, I loved when you said um, you were, that through the art, you were teaching them uh, about uh, really harmonious relationships with each other and how they were, how difficult. I loved that you actually said it was difficult for them because, and then to introduce that, that shift from the I to the we, I mean, imagine if we, you know, had had that yeah. when we were 10 years old, where we would be, right? Yeah. And I think, I mean, as, to me, when I look at all of it, that is the most mm. essential piece. Um, mm. Because if that exper direct experience could be given, you know, mm. I mean, all the art is amazing, all the metaphors, all the, but that piece, is essential mm -hmm. in us as a culture being able to um, be become more intimate with ourselves and each other. And I, that really touched me when I, when I, when I heard that. And I just wanted to put that out. And um, yeah, and I'm listening. Um, I always said that I'm coming back as an artist. <laughs> but, you know, for me, I'm just like listening, like, okay, like what called me to be on this call tonight? And wow. the colors and the vibrancy, um, you know, mm -hmm. um, to really listen how, you know, to be a conduit for what you're bringing forth. And it's really, mm -hmm. really, beautiful. I'm really happy to be here. Thank um, you. Thank and, you. Yeah, so thank you so much. And, and, and you know, I, I do introduce that section by telling the kids that we're now going to shift from me to we. I write that on the board and I tell them we've, I know we've spent 10 weeks talking about ex developing expressing ourselves but now we're going to shift and it's from me to we 
So I tell them that all ahead of time, but then they start doing it and and they they they're used to you know painting on a piece of paper, but then they have to give it to the person next to them and they don't want to give it away. <laughs> they're like, no, I don't want to do that. Cause and and I tell them it's okay, it's okay, you know, it and then they cut it up, you know, they do they destroy it and then they pass it on, they put the pieces on it again and you know, they, they just keep passing it around and doing different things to it. And then they're like, oh my God, look at this. And they're so excited, but it's a process. It's all a process. You know, Aldir got in touch with his own process. He engaged in his own process. And that's why he made this huge shift. So um, I really hear what you're saying. Thank you. Well, I love it. And you should have been at one of the very first CCC uh, co-creators convergences when, no, I don't I think it was Noel or Bob came up with this idea of, you know, everyone going, getting into groups and doing these big art pieces. And then the right that you had to cover over somebody else's and allow that and all the different um, feelings that came about in that collaborative experience. You know, we think we're such great co-creators, but put us in front of a, you know, a... Uh, a big mine, mine, mine. <laughs> and, and, we, and we did it as the first experience of a four day event. They didn't have 10 weeks to get to know each other and do their own thing. <laughs> that was like the first thing. Put that was group, courageous. Outside, create group art. And I, I will never forget that somebody painted over Dinamis flower. <laughs> <laughs> people she was she yeah it was a great all uh, these enlightened grown-ups yep. yeah 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 uh, the great memory Shelly beautiful well text we want to move to I know you, yeah. you're going to talk about deep time network with us yes, right if you can play the the little video by Carl Sagan Bill okay Rudolph. so we'd like everyone to turn to mic themselves and turn off their video and I'm going to do a screen share and show this uh video for my dear friend Tex so hold Thank on you. just one moment. From this distant vantage point, the Earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. Consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was lived out their lives the aggregate of our joy and suffering thousands of confident religions ideologies and economic doctrines every hunter and forager every hero and coward every creator and destroyer of civilization every king and peasant every young couple in love every mother and father hopeful child inventor and explorer every teacher of morals every corrupt politician every superstar every supreme leader every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on the mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam the earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot think of the endless cruelties visited by the inhabitants of one corner of this pixel on the scarcely distinguishable inhabitants of some other corner how frequent their misunderstandings how eager they are to kill one another. How fervent their hatreds. Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity in all this vastness there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves 
The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Visit? Yes. Settle? Not yet. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our stand. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known. Um, I will now share with you uh, a network, the Deep Time Network, and uh, I'll do screen share, uh, screen, screen share, uh, screen share. Okay, you're seeing my screen, I would think. Now, this is a Deep Time Network, and um, uh, I've come to know about the Deep Time Network only uh, since a few months. And uh, I am happy to say that uh, I met uh, Imogen through the Deep Time Network. And uh, also we have Viola here from the Deep Time Network and Jocelyn also is participating in the Deep Time Network. Uh, now the Deep Time Network, I will click here. And what's the, what's the Deep Time perspective? where did we come from where are we going how do we belong to something larger than ourselves now from the scientific data that we have uh, it is said that uh, the universe started like 14 billion years ago and that uh, humanity humankind is uh, really uh, you know has has existed only since a, a blink in uh, in time and uh, now, in a deep time uh, perspective, there are five uh, principles. One is context, so the context is a vast evolving universe. Uh, the universe or the cosmos started somewhere and it, it's evolved over billions of years. And we've all heard a bit about that, but we don't really, uh, uh, we may have been aware of it, but are we truly conscious in how we uh, we live do we take that into account so uh, another principle is that a deep time principle it's that it connects us to our matrix and here it is said the earth is the matrix i like to think of the earth personally as a terra placenta of humankind and which links us in the uh, matrix which would be the cosmos now through earth we are nourished uh you know food air water uh nourish through beauty that we may uh, observe uh also another third point is that it, it transforms us the deep time tra uh, perspective transforms us in the sense that we uh, identify with a larger self-identity we part of something bigger the cosmos in evolution, we are the consciousness of the cosmos. Uh, we see how uh, uh, Emergence Art Sparks program ignites in these uh, uh, youths, uh, eight to 12 year old, a sense of something greater than uh, what is more common, like they, they become creative and even co creative. At this stage of our uh, existence, uh, I think we would all agree that there's an urgency for us to start uh, co-creating uh, so it can guide our actions. That's the fourth point uh, in deep time perspective. And it serves uh, us as a learning continuum throughout life. 
because there was a beginning and it's evolving. It's even said that uh, the Earth, which we believe is uh, rotating around the sun, is also hurtling through the cosmos. Earth, sun, uh, Milky Way galaxy is all hurtling through the cosmos. We don't know to where. So when we get a bit more familiar with the deep time perspective of our existence, uh, we can uh, have a sense of uh, uh, context. And uh, as Carl Sagan says, in a way like uh, it, uh, you know, it can uh, inspire us a sense of humility, but also uh, reverential empowerment. Now, I will, I will just give you an overview of the course that we have, which is where um, the acquits is being applied. So this is the deep time leadership uh, and personal empowerment course. It, uh, it's over nine months uh, period. Uh, it started uh, in September. Uh, it's, the sessions are once a week. Uh, Wednesdays, a two-hour session. It's repeated on Fridays in a different uh, Wednesdays. It's uh, at uh, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern and repeated on Fridays. Uh, the speaker, we don't, uh, uh, it, the, the speaker actually uh, does a new presentation on Friday on the same topic. So it's not just a, a passing of the recording. Uh, Fridays, it's at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern. So that's uh, to facilitate attendance by people in Europe, in Africa, Asia, others attend also on Wednesday. So uh, presently we in uh, module one, introducing the new cosmology. And module one will be ending in a couple of weeks. And uh, so, uh, we have uh, module one sessions. Uh, this is just to give you a little rapid overview. So we had course overview and introduction. Then we had uh, uh, group meetings. Uh, that was when Emojen introduced uh, the ACWITS uh, guidelines or parameters to help us uh, uh, have a more effective dialogue in groups because there are hundred over hundred participants. And each session, we have about 50 participants plus, 50 plus from all over the world. And uh, so we need to be mindful and respectful and give everyone a chance to, to express themselves. And uh, so we've had Imogen, we, we've had Brian Swim, who's been a, a collaborator of, of Thomas, uh, Thomas Berry. And uh, we, uh, you know, they both uh, from the tradition of, uh, uh, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, uh, who is known for writing the quotation that after discovering gravity and all these uh, sources of energy, that uh, humankind will rediscover the power of love. And for the second time in history, it will be like uh, discovering fire. So uh, we are at a stage now where uh, there is a great need for love in action or collaborative solidarity. So we see that the programs that Imogen has developed over the years uh, with the youths, bring them from I to we. And uh, I'm hoping that eventually Imogen will be part of a, of a project where we can articulate and uh, new visuals to inspire as, uh, 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 was it Shelley said, uh, not just the youth, but there's a need to inspire adults. Anyway, so that's the deep time network. Right now, uh, registration is open for the module starting in, in January. Um, let me go back. Uh, we'll see uh, module two. Uh, session. Yeah. Anyway, there's the mo module two is, is open uh, for registration. So don't hesitate to, to I will stop uh, screen share now.
meeting con uh, okay stop share okay <laughs> very good so let's put on the uh, uh, everyone can put on their video and open the mic and uh, if you have any questions at this stage uh, we are at 9 18 we have a few more minutes before the program ends officially <laughs> so any question or comments Uh, yeah, um, this deep time network, it's beautiful work and put together. Um, who who uh, put that all together? It's uh, Jennifer Morgan. Jennifer Morgan and uh, actually Imogen is also part of the uh, uh, core team there. Uh, but there's Jennifer Morgan, uh, Brian Swim also. Uh, mm -hmm. is part of that. Brian Stream is a renowned author. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And uh, it's really, I think it's really Jennifer Morgan. It's yeah. her, yeah. her brainchild. And she's old friends with um, Mary Evelyn Tucker and John Grimm. Um, so she's been part of the, the Thomas Berry, um, you know, Lineage. Lineage, thank you. As they, as they call it, yeah. The yeah. Thomas Berry lineage, all going back to even to Teilhard uh, de Chardin. Yeah. 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 Then how long has this program been going? You're saying you're starting a second module. Has it been going? Well, on? it's uh, over nine months from September to March. Uh -huh. uh, but as I say, it's once a week. And mm -hmm. module two is starting uh, uh, in January. So anyone can jump into module two. Right. Uh, yeah. And uh, is there a, a fee for the course? Yes, the, the, there are all, all the modules, the fees are indicated mm -hmm. and uh, people can get in touch with uh, Jennifer herself uh, mm -hmm. to discuss about registration and the rates and all that. Yeah. Okay. And you can um, have a lower fee if you get a group of people to join and you pay ahead of time. They're very reasonable for this kind of educational. Yeah. In fact, uh, in fact, uh, Imogen, uh, Noel may remember that Ola, Ola mm. did a presentation yeah. here on, and uh, offered to to negotiate a, a group uh, fee for anyone coming through CCC. So anyone who who oh. wants to apply and say they're coming through CCC, they will get a group rate being afforded for uh, participants at CCC. Yeah, that's very nice. generous. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I, uh, I don't know if anybody else wants to jump in here. Um, I would uh, like to maybe ask uh, Viola, who is a participant, uh, to share her experience of, uh, and Viola is a, has been a teacher and uh, teaching even uh, at uh, Oregon University, I believe. And so to give us a little insight uh, as to how she's fine uh, uh, acquits being uh, used by these participants. Viola? Okay, thank you, Tex. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> with uh, Imogen's permission, I've been able to uh, use this and we, we, I have a group called Mindfulness uh, that, um, well, we talk about all kinds of topics, basically just trying to be mindful and paying attention. You know, it's very informal and we do Zoom sessions once a week. and because we do Zoom sessions and because the pandemic, we don't have an opportunity to go around and use body language and touch and, you know, communication is so important. And when we are speaking personally, face to face with people, we use a lot of body language and we touch each other and expressions and so on. But it's very difficult to do the same kind of communication online. And so when we do our meetings, we used to just, um, you know, my philosophy is, you know, wherever you go, there you are. So it's all emergent, you know, we're just gonna have open ended discussions and we can bring up any topic, whatever emerges at the end, that's gonna be the next topic for the next meeting. But it was very disorganized in that, that when we're talking, everybody just gets excited and they just wanna interrupt or somebody's giving a little speech and they just, we didn't have a, a structure. And I'm a very bad moderator because I'm very easy and very, you know, I'm afraid to tell people, you know, no, where to, 
where to draw the line. So when we, uh, when I discovered the equids that we were using in, in the deep time network, I thought this is perfect because here we have a structure that we can use to, to learn how to communicate effectively and efficiently, basically learn how to listen and just be quiet and let other people talk. And I'm really bad at that myself because I get excited and I just I just wanna say something, right? So I've had to learn a lot of self-discipline, but it is so great because we start out by agreeing. You know, we read, we read the, the different uh, uh, things, you know, the A, C, Q, each one represents a different, um, a different um, technique. What do you, technique. And, and so, so here we are. So this is what we're gonna do in case everybody agreeing to that. Oh yeah, everybody liked the idea. And so then we learned how to, to affirm each other, to, but to do it in such a way that is not disruptive that because when, we're, when a speaker is speaking and somebody just jumps in, that interrupts the flow of what the speaker is trying to say, right? I mean, it's, it's very disruptive to the mind of who's trying to communicate, right? So we've had to learn this and we've been using it for like about, I think this is gonna be our fourth time, our fourth week. So we're really just babies at it. We're starting, you know, from basically from scratch, learning a, a new system. And so this this thing about contributing, you know, we, we've learned that everybody has to participate, that that's very important for the whole group consciousness to contribute. And then everybody can build from that contribution and so on. And then that this thing about asking questions, that is so important. And it is from ask, a lot of times from asking the question, it, we can't answer it and that's okay. It's not about answering the question. It's about getting our minds to, to, to think about something different, you know, to, to get to another level by, by pondering, by wondering, by discovering and so on. And then we go on and then we feel so united. Oh, cause we're, we're just kind of using all of this and we start getting that feeling of what solidarity, I guess that's Texas favorite word. And then inclusivity, you know, when you have people who don't speak the language, because we have a lot of foreigners in, in, our, in our group, there's a, a girl from Lebanon and somebody from Germany, and there's people from all over. And so sometimes the accent, you know, is difficult. And, and me having spoken Spanish all of my life, I, uh, I have an accent too, but, but I, I had to learn how to speak English so that everybody understands. But for people who live in that country, in their and with this online stuff, they, they're speaking from their own country and they don't have an opportunity to practice English. So anyway, we have to learn how to include and, and be patient. That's another thing, Imogen, that I haven't told you about how learning to be patient with each other has been such a blessing. Um, and, and we've learned all of this through, through a quits, you know, being thankful, being grateful, showing that gratitude. Yeah, yeah, ending with Wonderful. gratitude. So. And so, oh, and the best one is the most difficult one is that share and stop at the end, you know, when you share, you know, take a breath, you know, count to 10 or something. And, 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 or if you want to say something, you know, kind of wait between speakers, you know, to have time to reflect before you just jump right in impulsively and so on. Anyway, this has been wonderful for us. And I'm so grateful. Now this great, Monday, great. we're going to use wonderful. this slide. Yeah, because because we have the slides too, and we haven't really deepened it enough. Now that I have the slides with Im Imogen's permission, that we can go over all of these things. Now that we're familiar a little bit with it, I mean, it takes time to develop these skills, right? Right. right. So anyway, I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. We have uh, as Rebecca Rebecca Dill. Who, who I know is in uh, the mindfulness group with uh, Viola. I don't know if she wants to, to uh, unmute and uh, put on her video. Uh, okay. She's a great I, art. Uh, hi, I unmuted. I just couldn't figure out why I have a panda up there and I don't know how to get it off, but I guess start my video. You can start that might do video. it. And I, I'm, yep. Okay, there here you go. There there you go. go. And I got ready for bed. <laughs> Welcome. That's why you have the band up there. <laughs> I guess it popped up naturally to hide me. <laughs> <laughs>
funny. Rebecca, I know, is a, is a great artist, uh, polyvalent artist. Uh, you'll be, I don't know if you saw it through Facebook, but you'll be able to catch the video of uh, what uh, Imogen shared with us this evening about her art and her art program in, in the school. Very interesting, very, very powerful even, you know, like how it inspires change, uh, ignites enthusiasm in these youths, you know. So uh, now- there, there will be a recording uh, that I will send to you and Emma Jean directly. It will also be on our website, cocreatorsconvergence.com. Just give me about 48 hours. I do a little editing just to make sure we take out all the little things. And uh, Great. I'm going Great. to put that in the uh, chat here. So I'm sorry. Speak about okay. interrupting. Good. Hey, Mojan, okay. you want to say a final word? Uh... Sure. Thank you, Tex. I just want to thank Noel, Bob, you, Tex, and everybody here for coming. This has just been a wonderful evening for me. It's mm -hmm. it's just been so positive. And I appreciate all the, the wonderful comments and just everyone being together here tonight. So thank you so much. This was very special. Yeah. I'm, sorry, I, I'm sorry I am late. I read the time wrong. Oh. That's okay. Oh, that's okay. Maybe yeah. I would, since Eva is here, Eva, would you like to say a few words? I mean, as a, you're probably the youngest of all of us. Uh, would you like to give a feeling of, you know, how did you find the evening? It was very interesting, for sure. My, I think my, my English was maybe a blocker for me to express a bit more, but uh, all the subjects, which with the children, I have a few nephews, so for sure arts, I feel like we don't have enough arts to make to, to let them speak out and just express themselves. So for mm -hmm. sure, hundred percent, I think we should have more and more. And even the acquits, um, you know, managing, I, I've been managing teams and this is a, it's a techniques that we do use because having Zoom meetings, team meetings is mm -hmm. absolutely not the same as uh, when we're, we would be in the office. You, you see your employees, you can see how everybody's feeling. So. For sure, it's mm -hmm. all very interesting, yes. Thank you, thank you very much, Great. Emma Jean. Great. <laughs> thank, thank you, Eva, thank you. Uh, well, uh, I, uh, I'm inspired by Imogen's work and uh, I feel, and uh, I think it was Shelley who put it a bit that uh, such an approach to uh, using art uh, should be accessible for adults. Uh, I mean, th there's no age limit, really. And I think that uh, humankind in general needs to be uh, inspired to collaborative solidarity so that uh, we can have a joyful ride on the pale blue dot that's hurtling through the mm -hmm. cosmos. And uh, mm -hmm. the sooner we get to collaborate with each other effectively, the better. And maybe we can start that online because online we're less likely to hit each other. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so at least acquits can come, come in handy there, but there's a lot of potential. And uh, Emojin is getting some good feedback uh, yeah. over the last uh, few weeks. So we, we, we're really looking forward and don't hesitate to get in touch with her. Thank right. you very Thank much. You. Thank you again, Noel. And Thank Bob. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, everyone.